Alright guys, today I'm going to be walking you through my 4-piece Deadeye, 2-piece Sentry Sniper build. It is a glass cannon composition, and a lot of people have been asking for this for a very long time. And I have to say that I'm really excited and happy that I have finally completed it, and I enjoy the playstyle a great deal. For those that don't already know, the Deadeye bonuses are as follows. The 2-piece bonus is 40% initial bullet stability, the 3-piece bonus is 20% marksman rifle critical hit damage, and the 4-piece bonus, which is where all the magic is, is when zoomed, marksman rifles lose headshot bonus, but gain 100% critical strike chance, and this is what the whole premise is based around. Starting off talking about my gear, I will begin with my sentries called knee pads. However, it's important to note that the two-piece gear set bonus that you're choosing to run can be anything. You could go with striker for stability, which would also be very good. You could go with sentry for accuracy like I've chosen to do here. You could go with two pieces of high-end gear if you do choose to do so. I would recommend something like reckless or the Barrett chest piece with a tenacious mask. Uh, or a specialized backpack, but this is very, very variable. Uh, you can switch out this two-piece bonus here that I've chosen to run with Sentry for something or anything else that is conducive to your playstyle. However, I have chosen to go with Sentry for the accuracy. Now, on my knee pads, I've chosen to go with a very specific set of attributes. You want enemy armor damage, that's the most important part, with armor as a major attribute, equally as important. And then you want a very high firearms roll. Now, the ratio of firearms to stamina on this build is something that's going to, you know, set a lot of people on edge. Now, they don't really like to run glass cannon builds. However, you are running a four Four piece firearms, one piece stamina composition. Uh, this is a very specific play style, and we'll get more into that when I show the gameplay. Uh, this is not for everyone, however, it is a really fun sniper build, and the Deadeye set can be used to devastating effect. Uh, on the knee pads, I have a great uh, firearms roll here. I have a nice armor roll. I have enemy armor damage, so all in all, rounded out, this is a great set of pads for the build. Moving on to my sentries called gloves, it's important to note that I am going to talk about further ways to min-max this build outside of what is shown on my character. Now, on these sentries called gloves, you need to roll marksman rifle damage to get full, you know, utility out of the build. You need as high a main stat roll as possible. I have 1258. And then outside of that, I would switch, if I could, health on kill to critical hit damage. You do not want critical hit chance on any pieces of gear, let alone your gloves. Uh, that is not going to help the build. So switching health on kill to crit hit damage will have a direct impact on how much per bullet damage you do uh, while scoped in and getting crits every single time. And then leaving damage to elites, I think would be a good call. Uh, if you want to switch that out, again, it's fine. But damage to elites is very powerful because this build does have cross utility in PvE as well. Uh, normally and previously, a lot of people have viewed the Deadeye set as a detriment to their damage uh, when it comes to dealing with NPCs because you don't get the headshot multiplier. However, that's not really true anymore. Uh, with a semi-auto marksman rifle and a significant amount of damage to elites and getting automatic crits every single time, this can be a very, very powerful PvE build and can be used to clear bosses very, very quickly. Moving on to my Deadeye pieces, I'll begin with my holster, which is a very straightforward item in any build now. Uh, what you want is the highest main stats that you can possibly have across the board. However, uh, electronics is not very important. If you can have 1268 and 1270 in stamina like what I've rolled here, that will be a phenomenal holster for the build. You're not going to be relying on skill power in any way, shape, or form. And then armor is a major attribute always. Now moving on to the Deadeye Mask, there are some choices that can be made here, but the number one thing to note is that you do not want critical hit chance as a major attribute. I have a very high uh, firearms roll here, over 1250, that's what I aim for again, uh, and the major attribute is exotic damage resilience. You could go with something like skill power or health, uh, but it's important to not have critical hit chance. And then for the minor attributes, you want enemy armor damage. I don't have that here. And it's very important, again, to go over the fact that this build is actually tremendously under its max efficiency. Uh, if you are able to fully min-max a Deadeye build, you're going to be able to get about 20,000 more damage than what I will be showing in my actual gameplay showcase. Uh, and it will drop players extremely quickly, as well as drop enemy uh, NPCs and bosses extremely quickly. So enemy armor damage is the target for the mask. I do not have that here. Uh, but someone with the time and the efficiency and the right gear pieces will be able to get a lot more utility out and damage out of the build. Jumping up to the Deadeye chest piece, there's a specific few set of attributes that you want to aim for here. Number one is that you want a higher main stat than what I have. I'm missing about 100 at least stamina that I could have in this build uh, if I were to have rolled a better chest piece. However, you want armor as a major attribute. I was lucky enough to get that. Uh, in addition to that major attribute, you do want damage to elites instead of health on kill, but health on kill won't hurt your utility in PvP. It actually has a little bit of use that you can get out of it, so it's not a bad thing to have. And then for minor attributes, you want ammo capacity. This is actually essential to the build. You're only going to be using your marksman rifle. Outside of that, you're going to have tremendously reduced potential if you use any sort of automatic weapon so you want ammo capacity wherever possible uh, and the most important thing is armor again main stat should be a lot higher uh, and you want damage to elites if you can get it because it will allow you to just shred npcs wherever you see them pop up in the dark zone especially uh, and if you are going to use this in pve however health on kill does not hurt 
Last but not least, we have this Deadeye Go Bag. Now, it's important to note that you will be rolling armor on your backpack. Pound for pound, it's better than everything else that can roll as a major attribute. And then for minor attributes, you want ammo capacity, just like your chest piece, because you're always going to be using your marksman rifle, and you'd prefer to have as long an engagement as possible where you have as much ammo as possible. Again, so very important to have that as a minor attribute, more so than many other builds. Outside of that, as high a main stat roll as possible, I was lucky here, I have a great firearms roll, and that contributes to my base damage scaling on my marksman rifle as well. Moving on to my weapon, this is where things get a little bit more specific. Now, I will not be talking about my secondary or my pistol because they have no bearing on the build whatsoever, and I have chosen to run this surplus SVD, but that being said, any other marksman rifle type is viable. You can use a bolt action, you can use a semi-auto, it doesn't really matter, whatever fits your playstyle best. Now, the SVD has a great firing pattern, it has great recoil, to me it has a nice RPM, a good mag size, good base damage, so that's why I've chosen it. And then for the talents, there's a very specific set that you want. Ideally, the gun would have deadly, prepared, and competent. Now, I don't have that, and destructive does still perform the role responsibility of increasing damage. However, deadly will have a much larger impact on your per bullet damage. So again, the priority is deadly with prepared and competent. However, if you can't get any one of those talents, there are plenty of acceptable alternatives such as harmful, such as destructive, etc. For gear mods, it's a toss-up between firearms with armor and stamina with armor. It's user's preference whether or not they want more damage or more toughness, but either way, it's going to be marginal, so that's kind of the last thing that you're going to improve in the build. And then for your prototype performance mods, what you're going to want is turret damage if you are protecting yourself with a flame turret, and I have opted to run an even split of two turret damage mods and two first aid self-heal mods. Those are going to increase your survivability and allow you to remain alive longer. For weapon mods, it gets extremely specific. What you need in your magazine slot is mag size, critical hit damage, rate of fire. You do not want critical hit chance anywhere on your weapon mods because they will not help with Deadeye. For your grip, you want critical hit damage in the major slot. Again, critical hit damage is the most important component of the build. Accuracy and optimal range both help tremendously as well. Then you want critical hit damage in the muzzle slot, stability, and headshot damage. I would actually prefer anything else. Headshot damage is not going to have any bearing on the build's utility, so that's a dead stat here on this muzzle. And then for the scope, you want critical hit damage again. Headshot damage is a dead stat, and optimal range is good as well. You can also replace this with something like Iron Sights, which would allow you to scope in without actually scoping in, but then there would be no indicator whether or not you have actually triggered or procced your ability to hit 100% crits with Deadeye. For skills, you want to be running Booster Shot. That will increase your damage, which increases your offensive and defensive capabilities because of the increased damage resistance as well. And then you want to protect your flank, a Dragon Breath uh, Fire Turret. Now, what this will allow you to do is CC enemy agents that get too close. It gives you an opportunity to reposition, as well as deals a lot of damage. Uh, and it does also work on NPCs, so this is something that I would highly recommend, but is not essential. You could also run something like Pulse that will increase your critical hit damage uh, and increase the damage that you deal to enemy agents, especially if they don't counter that pulse you can run something like a flashbang sticky but i would highly recommend the dragon breath mod on the flame turret and this will allow you to actually protect your back in certain situations to deter people from coming closer to you since you are a sniper now for your signature you can run tack link this will give a lot of utility and a lot of bonus increased damage or you could run for safety something like recovery link since you will be sitting on the back line of a lot of fights you can use this to revive down teammates from safety uh, if they do go down when face trading too often. So Recovery Link also works quite well, but any of the signatures is going to be viable. It's really user's preference. For talents, there's a little bit of flexibility here. I have opted to run, since I am in a group, Triage, Critical Save, Combat Medic, and Steady Hands. Now, some of these are variable. You can switch them out. If you are not in a group, even though I do not recommend this build for solo PvP, it can be done, but I would recommend this with a squad-based PvP. Uh, you can switch out something like triage if you are solo for something like precision. Even though you're not going to be aiming for headshots, you can still get the base pulse critical hit damage off of a headshot. So that is something very viable to replace triage. And then if you are, again, solo, not in a group, I would recommend strike back over combat medic. However, as soon as you are in a group, this is the advised talent. Combat medic, critical save, uh, triage to reduce cooldowns, and then steady hands. Now, steady hands is a really cool one here. You can just enter cover to reduce recoil. That, you know, decreases the spread on your firing pattern, allows you to land more shots, and just makes the build more potent overall. All right, to kick it over to some gameplay and talk about the tactics for a little bit, it's important to note that this, you know, build in general requires you to adjust your play style. Uh, I had a lot more fun playing this build than I have in a while playing The Division. Me and my squad did not struggle to get good gameplay. Uh, basically, every encounter that we got into was dynamic and fun. 
And another really important thing about this build is you can actually force dynamic gameplay uh, and encounters. You can create different positional advantages and disadvantages. Uh, you can break up the kind of meta assault rifle, cookie cutter, DPS, hip fire, five feet away from each other running in circles, you know, gameplay, and you can break up the content and make it more interesting for yourself. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me for a while now to do a review of the Dead Eye set. Is it still viable in 1.5? And the answer from my end is a resounding yes. The build is super, super fun, has a lot of damage. You can support your teammates. You can do provide a lot of utility. Uh, and as you can see here, you can defend yourself with your turret. You know, it requires positional, you know, awareness. It requires you to keep your head about you. Uh, you can perform the roles of a sniper. And every time you save a teammate or you drop someone from range with some good, accurate shots, uh, you start to feel a sense of satisfaction, a sense of pride. Uh, it's something that I found to be extremely fun. And I'll be continuing to use this for a long time to come in patch 1.5 in my live streams. Uh, it's a great deal of enjoy. I get a great deal of enjoyment out of it. Another thing to note is that positioning your turret in the proper place is very important. Uh, you can keep enemies pinned down. You can dictate the pacing of fights. As you can see here, the enemies are aware after a couple of encounters that I am a sniper. And they're actually very scared of the amount of damage that I can deal. Uh, this was kind of a common trend over the course of our entire Dark Zone live stream right here where I did test out the build. Uh, because over you know the course of one or two fights, the enemy team would realize that there was a sniper in the back that was not using a bolt action or something like that, but dishing huge amounts of continuous damage to them so that they could not out-trade my teammates. What that meant is that my teammates were freed up to sit at the front of the bus up there, uh, and I could deal 40 to 50,000 damage, uh, sometimes less, maybe 20 to 30, but large amounts of damage from very far away whenever they were trading with one of my allies. Uh, this meant that they could never win those trades. I could actually drop enemy agents by myself quite easily, especially when I proc my snapshotted bonuses. And again, this build is far from min-max. If you actually have deadly on your weapon, if you had critical hit damage on your gloves, you'd be dealing vastly increased damage than what I'm displaying here. Uh, especially if you used a different marksman rifle type, something like the MK-17, you'd have even further increased base damage. And that would allow you to drop enemy agents sometimes in two shots. Uh, as you can see here though, they are aware that I'm a sniper, but if he backs out of cover for even a split second, I can drop him. It's a really dynamic way to play. It's something that up till now I haven't really seen as much of. I did do a previous Deadeye uh, you know, video talking about the mechanics of it in 1.4, and I think in 1.5 Deadeye is even better. Uh, I will be using this much more often. It's a great deal of fun uh, to utilize. Now, another thing that you need to be aware of is that you are super squishy. In situations like this where the enemy is on top of you, you need to create distance. Uh, I would recommend playing PvP with this build in a group only. You cannot really do the same tactics or you know have the same you know style of encounter if you are by yourself. That being said, if you're by yourself and you have a vantage point, it's great, it's super fun, you can do a lot of damage. However, I would advise having your teammates do what you can see they're doing right now. They are between me and the enemies. They're actually preventing the enemies from moving up. And the enemies are well aware, like I said before, after a couple of fights that I am a sniper. Uh, they are not pushing up, they're not coming out of cover. They're pinned down, they're actually pinned down. And what this build right now is allowing me and my squad to do uh, is have tactical encounters in the dark zone the way that I believe the game was always intended to function. Right now we have a lot of just really uh, unintuitive cookie cutter DPS assault rifle builds and they just sort of you know run at each other and then face trade. A build like this with you know the right positional advantages with the right squad composition is going to allow you to break up that metagame. It's going to allow you to have dynamic fun encounters. I can't say it enough. It's something I enjoy tremendously on the live stream. I'll be using it a ton more in the future. Uh, it has a lot of flexibility as well. You can min-max a lot further. The flexibility includes something like smart cover if you wanted to have that. You know, put it on the cover that you're using. Every time you enter cover, you get steady hands proc, which increases, you know, your weapon handling. Uh, there's some a lot of things that mesh together and create a build uh, that performs an actual sniper role. You can switch out for something like Sticky Bomb with Flashbang. Uh, there's no end to the number of you know changes that you can make to the build that would make it still viable and function slightly differently to mesh with any unique player's you know different play style. Uh, I like a long you know a long vantage point where I have a huge amount of distance between me and the enemies, where my team can take up a, a point about equidistant from me and the enemy agents, and I can sit way in the back. I can fire my heels forward if I have to. I can throw my turret forward if I need to to support them. I can throw grenades, lob them up and over and into the engagement. Uh, but I am well removed from combat. And as long as you maintain that positional awareness, you're going to be relatively safe. You're going to be dealing a lot more damage than the enemies are prepared to deal with. Uh, they're not going to be expecting it. And the best damage is unexpected damage, as we always say at Upper Echelon. Uh, so it's something that's going to give you a lot of fun. And I really have not seen many people utilizing sniper builds unless it's kind of the one-tap sniper build, which a lot of people are really into. And I think that that's viable as well. But Deadeye, to me, is just making a resurgence. It's much more 
uh, fun to use now than it ever was previously. Even back during 1.3 when it was very powerful with the hip firing, etc. I think it's uh, it was not as fun. Now it's even more fun. It performs an actual sniper role. And I'm going to look forward to using it a great deal more in the future. I sound like a broken record, but I'm blown away by how fun and how much damage this set can deal. Especially if you min-max this build. If you properly min-max this Deadeye build, I anticipate the ability to actually two-shot enemy agents with 300 RPM on a semi-automatic marksman rifle. So, a lot of utility there. Now, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm sorry it took me so long to get to this Deadeye video, but it is finally here. If you like it, please leave a thumbs up and leave a comment below. As always, if you want to support the channel, please check out the links below, and have a nice night.